Okay, we're live now. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Let me just anybody start. out there? <laughs> there anybody Carola. <laughs> Carola Bravo. Let me stream to Facebook and then we can begin. Thank you for popping in. Mm -hmm. Wow, we've already had nine people. Um, Where do you see that? On the bottom, it says participants. Now we oh. have 10. We can't okay. see everybody, so hi. Hi, everybody. <laughs> this is nice weird. to this have you a, here. It's totally new experience. Yes. Totally new and surreal experience. Give me just a second, because I almost streamed to my personal Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> Um, let me see if I can. Okay, I'm getting it ready. I apologize for the delay. Doña Gabriela, everyone listening in. <laughs> you are forgiven. Oh, it's perfectly okay. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> um, Okay, it's just preparing and then we can start in just a second. <clears throat> hmm. Okay, so I think we can start. Um, Doña Gabriela, you ready? We're yes. ready. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> we're yes. about as ready as we're going to be for this. You know? It's That's good enough. <laughs> Let me just have, make a brief introduction and then I'll turn it over to the both of you, okay? Sure. Yes. Um, so for everyone that's watching, welcome to the webinar in conversation, constructing work in collaboration presented by the Bakehouse Art Complex. Thank you for joining us. My name is Laura Novoa and I'm the Curatorium Public Programs Associate at the Bakehouse Art Complex. The Bakehouse is a nonprofit organization founded in 1985 by artists for artists in a formal industrial era, Art Deco era bakery. It provides studio residencies, infrastructure, and community to over 60 local artists. Our mission is to address the need for affordable live, live work, and workspaces for artists in Miami's urban core. Before we begin, I'd like to thank Bakehouse's Executive Director, Kathy Leff. For the ongoing and critical support we receive, the Bakehouse would like to thank its private and public sponsors, including the Knight Foundation, the Paris Family Foundation to Crearte, and the Miami Foundation. Miami-Dade County and the Department of Cultural Affairs and the State of Florida and its Division of Cultural Affairs. Uh, for this webinar, artists Gabriela Gamboa and Tonya Vegas will share their experience working on the collaborative installation open process last summer in the Bakehouse's Swenson Gallery. They will discuss how creating a space for collaboration is an important part of artistic growth and self-discovery and how it has influenced their individual practices. Um, thank you, Gabriela and Tonya, for being here with us today. Um, before I hand it over to you, um, some basic housekeeping rules for this session. Presentations by Tonya and Gabriela will be followed by a Q&A. We will save questions for the end once, all, once the artists have presented. Please feel free to ask any questions or share any comments in the chat box to the right-hand side of the screen throughout the webinar. I'll make note of them, and once the artists are finished presenting, I'll share your questions and comments with them. Once again, thank you for joining us tonight. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook for information on future virtual programming and Bakehouse Artist Updates. Okay, ladies, are you ready? <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> okay, um, 
I would like to start this conversation uh, talking about what motivated me to begin with. Um, through 2017 and through 2018, I was uh, working on a series titled Scriptures and Traces, where I explored the imprints left by elements of nature in their interaction through time. For this fascinating work, I was mostly using digital instruments, a digital camera, digital processes, laser cut, and finally painting. Um, I want to show you, whoops, this is not what I was going to show you. No, this one neither. I'm going to show you this after. I'm sorry about this. <laughs> I had it all. <laughs> it's always it always happens it yeah <laughs> okay it's this one so um these are uh those um works uh this comes for, ex for example from a rock this from water so with time two things converged to produce a shift in the exploration one was conceptual, the other rather physical. There was this question in my mind. If I consider myself an element of nature as any of the others I am working with, and I am capturing the imprints left by their interaction, for instance, in rocks, clouds, bodies of water, then which and how are the energetical imprints that I am constantly living in space? And this question converged with the need to physically include my body into the work. So I began using my body as the, as the instrument to work with inks and oils on paper. And as my studio is quite small, I started to need more space to develop this exploration. <clears throat> At that moment, Bakehouse offered the artist a program called Open Space, where you could apply to use a certain space in the building to develop an experimental work during a certain amount of time. So I applied to use the space of the Swenson Gallery, which fortunately was unoccupied at the moment of, for for the length of a month. It was a great opportunity and Bakehouse artists, and as Bakehouse artists may know, the gallery is synchronistically just opposite to my dear friend Gabriela Gamboa's studio. Sonia, can I just say something? Were you going to share some images? Yes, I am. Okay, okay. I am. Sorry. Uh, so, we had um, the idea I had in my mind was to create an installation making visible through pigments and colors on papers in the wall the energetic configurations that emerged through my body, through my hands as I moved in space. I would follow my energetic impulses and not so much my thoughts. The emphasis was on the process. I could envision it was going to be a rather performative experience. So I asked Gabriela, who is a performance and video artist, if she would like to engage in the experience. So we talked, uh, fortunately she said yes. <laughs> so uh, we talked, <laughs> we talked about filming the process and be open to the possibilities that would appear through the days. I also invited her to produce her own work that could spring out from the collaborative experience. <clears throat> we had open doors for bakehouse artists and the general public on a given schedule during the week and shared commentaries and questions with them, which also added the richness of an open interaction with people. And here I'm going to show you 
<clears throat> some of the images of us working in space. Um, here we are in the um, starting the the experience. Sonia, you're not sharing. That's why I interrupted oh, you. Oh, yes. I'm sorry. <laughs> I did I share the others? No, that's no. why I. I oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> now you have to go back. I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay, we oh. put the drawings in the back so we could visualize what you were what you were saying. That's a well, new work, though. Yeah, it's a new. Those oh. are new. It's okay. New. Go try. Um, go to the bottom and the share screen. Yeah. 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 Try. Yeah. Okay. So there we go. So, yeah, open your pictures. Perfect. Yes. Yes. So, so there, there you both I'm are. Sorry about the other ones. It's okay. Here are both of us in, in a the almost virgin space. Mm -hmm. um, then uh, we started to work in it. Here's Gabriela's camera capturing the moment. These are faces of the work. I really like all these in process pictures. Yes. It kind of shows the, <laughs> the behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. Exactly. <sighs> so <clears throat> The experience became much more interesting and nourishing than we ever imagined. Yes. We shared thoughts, sensations, dreams, poems, insights, our daily lunch, and the magical time of coffee. <laughs> A connected sensorial and generative space was created by our different rhythms approaches and visions. It felt like we had weaved a resonant field from which multiple ideas and possibilities would spring. For me, the installation open process was the visible outcome of the experience and Gabriela at her own rhythm created a series of videos. Um, I'm going to show you more works, uh, more um, images. I'm sorry about this, all this. It's all part of the process. Yeah. <laughs> of the open process, mm -hmm. as it always is. So. I love this photograph that Gabriela took. Here we are again, both of us. This is the final uh, installation. Here we are giving a, a talk at the bakehouse. And this is the installation full of um, boys and girls from the schools. <clears throat> um, we also uh, have integrated ideas and developed a collaborative project for which we hope to find soon an exhibiting space. <laughs> <laughs> so this so you're saying that you have, you're creating a new work or kind of working on something that developed from this original um, collaborative experience at the Bakehouse. So it's yes. something almost like a second iteration or a continuation. Exactly. Indeed. We oh. hope so. Mm -hmm. Cool. I didn't know this. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, now we've let the cat out of the bag. Yeah. So yes. it's putting it on. And it's, it's looking for a space. Oh, it's so. looking for a space. <laughs> hint, hint, I see. So, <laughs> um, 
Dr. Ed, do you want to go ahead? Yes. Uh, for, for me, the process was completely different because, um, like Tonya said in her, in, her ta in her introduction, she had been working on a series and she, it was like an extension of what she was already doing. So for me, it was unique in the sense I was only a few months at Bakehouse, which where I arrived through Tonya. So I was already um, enjoying just the simple idea of having a space where other artists converge, which for me was very important at the moment because I had just left Venezuela and I was really um, adrift and not knowing where my work was going really. Uh, it wasn't really going anywhere because I didn't have a space. But fortunately for video artists, um, the space isn't always uh, essential. So when Tonya invited me, it was a moment to jump back into something which, for which I am very dear and close to, which is collaborative work, because people that have known me for a long time know that I, my initial work, my, the beginnings of my work was very performative. And I belonged to a group that did only um, performative and multimedia installations. So um, this added a, another aspect of what I was interested in doing. And the other advantage for me was that I was totally uh, in for the ride. I was totally open to something which flo flowed very beautifully, like Tonya said. It was all very organic. It just kind of happened. And since I was so up for, well, let's see where this takes us. Um, the, part of the day was employed in doing the documentation of what Tonya was doing. But then I could cross the hall and go into my studio and work on what I, was, what I felt. But most of my work was not done in the studio. Actually, I did a lot of filming outside. I would go out and do my video work outside. Unfortunately, I didn't have anybody to record what I was doing, but it's not very glamorous anyway when you're just filming video. <laughs> so that said, I actually want to backtrack to what was really the essence of how this whole um, project began was that Tonya and I were driving along. Um, Tonya, can you stop sharing your... Um... Oh, she did. I'm a... No, I am, <laughs> I am not. I am sharing? You no. are? Oh, no. Oh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> oh. oh, that was... Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, dear. Um, I'm the one that can't find her place here. Okay. So I want to backtrack, like I said, and, and start where, um, where we really began, which was um, one day we were driving along. I don't know where we were going. And, and Tonya asked me if I knew who Marie Howe was. And, I, and the funny thing was that I did, I had worked with, with her in poetry and we had translated one of her books in Venezuela. So I'm gonna read the poem that initiated this because I think it's a good place to start. It's Great. called Singularity. And it says this, do you sometimes want to wake up to the singularity we once were? So compact, nobody needed a bed or food or money. Nobody hiding in the school bathroom or home alone, pulling open the drawer where the pills are kept. For every atom belonging to me as good belongs to you. Remember, there was no nature, no them, no test to determine if the elephant grieves her calf or if the coral reef feels pain. Oceans don't speak English or Farsi or French. Trashed. Would that we could wake up to what we were when we were ocean and before that to when sky was earth and animal was energy and rock was liquid and stars were space and space was not at all, nothing. Before we came to believe humans were so important. Before this awful loneliness. Can molecules recall it? What once was before anything happened? No I, no we, no one. No was, no verb, no noun. Only a tiny, tiny dot brimming with is, is, is. All, everything, home. 
I also felt like it was important to read it because of what we're going through now. It seems like we, it's a, a circle that has been coming full circle is what I mean. Um, so mm -hmm. we started with this kernel of something um, that for me became very significant, very, very significant because I literally started to work with the, oh, excuse me. I got a little bit emotional. <laughs> I literally started to work with the words in tangible, tangible ways. The words became uh, uh, things to me. Um, uh, they became corporeal. So that was practically the basis of what I started to do as performances in nature and how I was responding to what Tonya was doing in the studio and how I was working through this poem and another poem that I'm not going to read, but that is, uh, that's also very beautiful and that was also part of the work. But the real beginning was this. So also, what also seems so fascinating about that moment to me is that recently a friend of mine sent me a video where Marie Howe um, has made a reading and they've done a video about this poem. And when I was listening to her, I was like, no, that, that's all wrong. What, you're reading it wrong. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. I had already taken possession of this work and I thought that's actually what one wants people to do when they see your work. You want people to feel so identified or so into it mm -hmm. that they can really feel like it's like they, they it belongs to them. So I think with Tonya, Tonya and I started to work a little bit like that and it was very fluid. It was, she spoke a lot about the conversations and the time we spent together, but we also had so much respect for our silences and we were able to be together in silence and be creative, which was really interesting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this collaboration was beginning to take on like a life of its own, where the end product was not nearly as important in the moment as the transit to get there, what we were going through uh, in, the, in the process. Um, so, um, I'm going to show you also a piece, a little bit of one of the videos, which is not so easy to um, share as photographs because mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. it also has sound, but hang on a second. If I find it, it's always, a, we always think we're ready, you know, with this, <laughs> everything is set, but it's not. I had it here a minute ago and now it's gone, of course. Um, and well, I think that, like Tonya said, the, um, the important part of this process was how we could see the transformation, not only of our work, oh, I know what I wanted to say, that, and the two results were so, so different. Our methods are so different, but we were coming from a basically the same place, but our transit together produced very different, different work, obviously, but it was the ability to um, have that dialogue, even though our mediums are different, our results are completely different. And we would, we just let it flow. So um, I'm, you can see, can I can't find something? the video. Yes, please um, help me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Get me it's, out of here. <gasps> Uh -huh. It's like the, uh, um, what I, what I can um, describe is that it's like, more like a field. It's like a field that, uh, of, of, um, full of all these um, conversations, thoughts, uh, totally. silences. Um, it's, it's, it's like a field from where mm -hmm. uh, uh, the works sprung there. But it, it's like the, the fascinating thing for me uh, was that like that poem that was the start really of, of our interaction creates 
that field i don't know if i i feel it like that it's it's like an atmosphere it's like something that covers you that's what i uh, um remember that as, that's what i have of what we created the creation was the process and then uh other creations came out from yeah, there exactly mm -hmm. yes the pro the creation was a process and it was a field and it was it was a very um magical and lucky moment because we were both we both had that possibility of doing nothing but that 24 hours a day exactly. if we wanted to that was a extraordinary opportunity it was a very extraordinary opportunity and that can only happen when you when you coincide in in a space mm -hmm. where where this dialogue is possible like where if if we hadn't have had that space in the studios and all the conversations because it wasn't only the conversation between tonya and myself it's also all the conversations that mm -hmm. go on between the artists daily people that go by people that see that opine you know it it's that that fluidity that allows um a new mm -hmm. new work to come through and i think that's really important so i'm going to show a p a part it's the video is in three sections but i'm going to show the first section um and then well no we can probably watch the whole thing i don't know it's um it's not that long oh, let's see if we can look at it well it is that long it's 15 minutes <laughs> we're not going to watch it i don't know if you can hear the sound probably not I don't think you had any sound, right? No, unfortunately. But I, I think it was actually really beautiful without any. Um, it had a different. A it different. Had, yeah. yeah, and I mean, I think it's interesting because you, I, you know, I was able to work with you both and have conversations with you and enter this like space where you were kind of this field, right? Every once in a while, um, but you can see it's interesting because you can see in your video the connections with Donya's work where you know the the images kind of refer back to the pieces that Donya has on the wall the paper cut in different kind of angular ways and the you know the dirt kind of referring to a little bit of the igneous markings on Donya's own work but it could also they could both stand alone as well so I think it's a very interesting kind of dynamic um, that you've been able to create Um, I actually have a little bit of a, of a question for the both of you um, because you've made so much mention of this kind of naturally emerging conversations and interactions and silence and you were, you know, both working together but also engaging in, in you know, like you were having lunch together, having coffee together. So the interactions weren't just work related in a way. It wasn't just, you know, going To, to create this, to create your work, but really you guys were coexisting in, in a much deeper way. And I, I see and how you've both kind of, um, I guess, fed off each other artistically, but I wonder, um, you both work in very different mediums and in very different ways. So how were you able to kind of find the commonalities in your ways of thinking and working and creating? I mean, it's, It's the, almost the same as when you have, you know, you coexist and live with someone else. Everyone has their habits, their ways of doing things. And it's about finding like a happy medium. So how did you, how did both of you find that space, like, you know, that space within yourself? Well, I think that's was what I was saying at the beginning. We found, we found that where we begin the work, 
Mm -hmm. When we start, when we have a feeling that we're both very attached, for instance, to poetry and to certain, we, we both read a lot of the same things. We think about a lot of the same things. And that's why it's so fascinating to see that her results are completely different than mine. How we always go through life like that. Even if you come from the same place, you're going to take it in a totally different direction. Mm -hmm. And also that, uh, well, to begin with, the medium is completely different. I mean, the way of working uh, is completely different. And um, I, in fact, sometimes I would go into my studio and, and, and just take paint in my hands and, and work with it, or which I do as a habit myself. I draw and I paint, but I would never show anybody the drawings. In, in the video, though, I do use the drawing underneath. That was part of what I was doing in my studio with, the, with performing um, when I was with the dirt and, and the drawing is under. But I think the essence of it is that when you, when you have a dialogue, uh, a very close dialogue, and you identify in so many aspects with another person or another artist, it, it just... Uh, it, sort of comes out naturally. Um, and that, and I think that's what Tonya has insisted a lot, a lot also in the fluidity of this process. Yes, in, in, it's like a, an organic process. That, and and the, the beautiful thing is that the, the, um, the attitude has been all the time, it was open, was open to what emerged. So we were like having, well, for example, the poem came, I, I, I read the poem, I, I spoke to Gabriela, I told her about Marie Ho, she knew Marie Ho, there were a lot of synchronicities. And in our lives, well, we, we've had I mean, I knew Gabriela, she knew me from Caracas, but we hadn't uh, had the, the opportunity to, to be together, to, to, you know, to interact. So really, we have a lot of things that interest us in, in common. Um, one of them is the climate change. Mm -hmm. Another is what energy is, what, how we are all part of nature. So, you know, it's like diving in all those issues that are our interests in life, mm -hmm. that the weaving of this space um, was created. Yes, and um, even if you come from a different uh, background, the, the idea that we coincided also here. Like she said, mm -hmm. we, knew it, we knew each other in Caracas. And in Caracas, our lives were, our, our, our creative process was completely uh, opposite from one another. And if we hadn't had the opportunity to be thrown together like we were, mm -hmm. because that was just part of destiny that we coincided in this city at, at the same time and that we were ha going through much of the same things. Um, she had only been here maybe one year more than myself, but we were part of the group of Venezuelans that had stayed longer, you know, because mm -hmm. the immigration, the migration has been very uh, different for people that have left in the beginning of what happened in, in Venezuela than what is happening towards the end. So also that also brought us together in a different way. And the fact that at that moment, we were both alone in Miami and both alone in, in, bake, in the possibility in Bakehouse with, with time to invest in, in this creative process. And I think that was the really fascinating part of it. So, yeah. Um, so coming at it from a slightly different angle, um, you know, you, both of you have spoken and the title of your work speaks to this idea of inherent openness in the process and, and the possibilities that emerge from 
the act of working towards something rather than the final product. Um, how do you balance between prioritizing the process, which seems like a very fertile and fruitful place as an artist, with the real concern of creating finished works of art to sell or to exhibit, for example. So, you know, that kind of tension between dwelling in the process, which you, you, you feel is, is, you know, like I said, fertile and fruitful, but also kind of having to create something final. In essence. Well, I think they, they don't, um, they are not uh, contradictory. No. <clears throat> it, the, the, the emphasis uh, was on the, the, the process, but the process um, um, has an outcome or a different outcomes. So it's like, it's like, um, a fluent organic process that um, results in something and then changes in another thing. But I don't think, I mean, and also you, you have like the stages of the yeah. process that is very beautiful. I think it's, it's very important for me, for example, as an artist, I think to have those stages of the process is very important. And I also think there's, uh, just like there's stages in the process, there's also stages in, in our development as artists. I think it's not the same, but, but also we knew it was a moment for experimentation and that this experiment, it could lead to something which we did have at the end. But I also think we did have it because we're both, we both have a maturity in our work. So it's not, we weren't just, going into it without anything but also that you 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 know you know that it can go either way you might not have anything but that will that was the beauty of this process was that when we finished not only did we feel like okay but these five weeks or whatever it was are over but we have a tangible thing here but also we want to continue that tangible we want it to grow into something else we want to maybe maybe make another experiment or mm -hmm. continue on this same one which already speaks um by itself mm -hmm. so um i think they're not contradictory but i think they're two different moments in 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 the work but i think both of us are very process oriented in our work i think we're, we we have mm -hmm. a lot of a lot goes into the time that we spend with the work and how it and how it comes through mm -hmm. so um but obviously we also need to sell yes <laughs> <laughs> or at least to you know be invited to talk and talk about but, it but um there's also an invitation to the to to the spectator yes to enter the process mm. to, and to feel the importance of the process everywhere. I mean, in life, in, in art comes from the, the reflection of life itself. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I think the, the um, emphasis in the process it gives you another way of perceiving mm -hmm. a work of art also life yes yeah and i definitely I, think and i think we both sorry loud but i think just to finish i think both of us feel like everything informs our work mm -hmm. that's why we started with the poem everything we do informs our work and that's why even lunch the coffee the the smells um mm -hmm it all comes back the music that you listen to or don't listen to at a given time so um it all informs what we do because at this stage especially uh, of our lives as as artists i think everything comes into the picture mm -hmm. no i was i was going to kind of reiterate what both of you have have said that i think that's the beauty of a space like like the bakehouse mm -hmm. uh, you're able you know whoever comes in is able to kind of 
you know, either peek through a, through a window to see someone's studio if they're not there or, you know, talk to an artist um, if they're working in their space. And it's really this focus on the process, on this kind of the behind the scenes that you don't see if you walk into a gallery space or a museum where you, you see the final product, right? And being able to witness artists at work is in its, in its own way something really beautiful and something that I think is, is, you know, like I said, you can't see in, you can't see everywhere. So I, I think it's some, like something special, something like what Bakehouse can show, you know, give the spectator or the viewer or the visitor that kind of unique experience. Definitely, definitely. Because for instance, in Venezuela, we don't have a space like that where you, where everybody come, where there's such different artists working in the same space, which is also important because you need that other perspective of mm -hmm. very different um, uh, avenues and inputs uh, that, that and are approaches. necessary. Yes, and approaches that are necessary for growth. Mm -hmm. And the other important part is that, growth. Because I think both Tonya and I approached this as a moment for growth. Yes. And by approaching it like that, that's what happened. I think we both felt like, oh, this has been nutritious and uplifting and just has allowed the work to grow in individually as well. Because I think then we went back to our spaces exactly. and then we were in a different place too, because it, it, we could approach our work with a new perspective or a new, mm -hmm. uh, a new, way of looking at it. Mm -hmm. um, I just want to end the conversation reading um, a little comment that we have from a short comment that we have from one of the attendees and it says um, regarding the poem you read earlier Gabriela that the poem speaks to this moment for me indeed though I knew the poem I hear it differently now with this virus we are also connected so another part of each other our singularity bubble has been challenged so to end the conversation, could you just kind of speak to where you're at in terms of the situation and what you would kind of recommend or say or inspire in, in other artists that are going through this moment? Well, uh, for me, it has, it has been different. I mean, at the beginning, I was like paralyzed, I think, uh, trying to mm, understand or, or mm, feel where was I? I mean, was, um, after I like, started to feel the, the, the need of silence and it was perfect because we were confined. So um, I started to work very uh, small and with what I had. I went to Bakehouse, fetched some uh, watercolors and, and paper, small paper, and started to work. And very interesting because it was with the least, I mean, with the least things. So it was like from the silence, start very small. And hearing myself, hearing the space, hearing what's happening. And it has organically, again, um, moved. I feel that it's very important. It has been a, a, an important um, way of being with ourselves and with um, lentitude. I, it, do, is that word in, in English exists? Slow, slowly. Slowly. Slowness. Slowliness. Uh, to, to slow down. To slow down and rethink and revalue and again 
see the world with like from the silence yeah i think it was um different it's different for everyone in this tonya and i don't coincide so much i for me i was I immediately drew to my experience from Venezuela because that's how I had been living for the at least the last three years in a, in not in a such a severe lockdown like you didn't fear a contagion but you feared for your life many many days and we had real actual lockdowns many times um, with no electricity or no internet or so it was it was interesting to draw on that um, capacity that I had for, uh, for getting comfortable quickly in my work, for focusing, tunneling it towards work, which um, I must say has been very productive. I immediately just, I was like Tonya, I went to Bake House, got my whatever I needed, which wasn't much. Like I said, the advantage for video artists is to be able to, to work um, on the computer, which now I'm like all computered out. I don't, I can't anymore. <laughs> but um, so I immediately I went into the work and into communication with other people because I felt like I needed to maintain that. Um, I didn't draw into myself. On the contrary, I was in continuous collaboration or, or communication with other people. In fact, the comment comes from my dear friend, Colleen Pierce, who's my other sister in art in this world. Um, and she, uh, she was the one that sent me the video from Marie Howe uh, that that I saw and that I would gladly share with everybody if I could, but I don't know where I put it. I saved it somewhere, but um, which is a totally different version of, of this, which is also interesting to see. But I think that it is true that we need to um, change perspectives of how it's going to develop from now on. But for me, it was very important also I know it's going to sound terrible what I'm going to say, that museums and galleries were closed and that this element, because you before you spoke about selling art and how do we produce works to sell and how it became more important to produce the process and the production of the work and what happens to the artist than the object uh, and, and things have become superfluous. And I think that's so important that then we need to um, understand the difference between making the work of art and what goes into making it and just obtaining a piece of art uh, for decorative purposes or, you know, uh, for whatever reasons. Um, so I think that that's one of the things that have come to pass with this, with this uh, situation, that we have to reevaluate our reevaluate our relationship to the outside world to what commercial world to everything that mm -hmm. goes on around us well like Tonya said to whatever goes on in the planet which is our basically the most important thing we have to figure out right now um so i i think that that it it's been a different experience for each artist i think and also yes. in time, it's been different. Now we've been here too much. Now we're, we're tired. We, the cycle changes as well. The first month was something. The second month is something different. And I think it's important to respond to that as well. How do we, how do we go about now? How do we re-enter the world? And also that fear of going back outside. Because that, that's the interesting thing of, of the process, of the of of looking at the process mm -hmm. of things, of yourself, of your movements, of, of, of um, how things move and mm -hmm. not the things in itself, mm -hmm. uh, the fixed things, because everything is moving all the time and everything is a process all the time because it's moving. Mm -hmm. So um, I think that gives us flexibility yeah also to to our perceptions 
I want to show just the last part of the video as well. Sure. We'll end on that, on that note. I think. Can I do that? Yes. Can, can. <laughs> <laughs> can you it? It's Let's very see. short. It's very <laughs> short. <laughs> it's called the elephant grieves. See, that didn't take any time at all. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's a really beautiful way to, uh, to end our discussion. I, I thank you both for taking the time. Um, I was lucky enough to be able to work with both of you and kind of be part of the process, at least from a distance. So thank you both for taking the time. And I Do hope- people have any questions though? I've been keeping track of questions. Um, let's ask one more time. <laughs> I've gotten a lot of positive comments. Uh, no questions, though. Okay. So okay. we can, I think we can call it. Um, but maybe, Gabriela Antonia, you can both um, write your, your emails on the chat in case, or share maybe your social media if anyone has any questions. They can contact you directly. Um, oh, potentially how to write. <laughs> and potentially continue the conversation with you. Oh, that sure. I know. Sound uh, good? Yeah, sounds good to me. Thank you both again so much. I will no, thank you. We are, I am eternally grateful to Bakehouse. It's my, it's my other home. And I, I really, I feel like this would not have been possible if we hadn't coincided in that space. And if we hadn't been given the opportunity to explore the space, because the piece was also very responsive to the space. So yes. I think it's important. Well, I'm glad, uh, you're part of the big I, I, I'm sorry, but I can say the same as Gabriela with respect to Bake House. I really feel that there is a community and you can feel the community in Bake House and also uh, possibilities to work um, such as this one. That is a program of, of um, Bake House in which you can use the spaces in an experimental way and different uh, programs that all the time are um, um, coming along. Yeah, it so. has, it has, it's wonderful. I mean, in fact, we're such a community that sometimes we forget to work and we just hang out. <laughs> <laughs> we go there and, and it's so hang, good also. <laughs> and we just make coffee and talk. Yes, because like I say, all of, the, all of that informs the work. Yes, it does. It really yes. does. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. <laughs> well, this makes me miss both of you and the bakehouse. Yeah, me much. too. Hopefully mm -hmm. we'll be together again soon. With, yeah. yeah, with our masks. <laughs> <laughs> Will we recognize ourselves? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Alrighty, well, okay. well thank you everybody that hang the king to hang out with us it's been thank fun. you thank, thank you, you everybody <laughs> <laughs> thank you both again bye bye <laughs>